Uh, hi everyone, my name is Matt. I, uh, I'm a co-founder at Plotly. Um, we're an online graphing and analytics platform. Uh, and our goal is to be a place to make and share beautiful, awesome graphs. Um, and so our goal is also to be um, something that's kind of a full stack experience. So that's why I'm going to start out and show you. I'm on the subreddit of, uh, for Python right now. And this is an IPython notebook right here. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I can get it. There. So uh, this is a IPython notebook. It is an interactive way of making uh, graphs online. And I'm going to, oh, sorry, I'm not on my computer here, so I'm doing this on the fly. So normally if you make a graph with Python or with Excel or with R or most graphing programs, it looks like this. Uh, and so this is a PNG and it's something that, you know, you take a screenshot of and you download and you email to someone. Uh, and that's kind of the end of it. But if you make a graph with Plotly, we right out of the box make it look like this. And so it's drawn with JavaScript, it's in the browser, it's interactive, and you don't have to do anything to get all that functionality out of it. And it gets really special because if you want to use any of our custom defaults, you can. Now, on top of that, it's a, it's a place to collaborate for technical and non-technical users. So any graph that you make with Plotly is always browser-based and it's at a URL. So that means that you can just share it by clicking to the URL. Uh, on top of that, once you've made a graph, instead of it just being a PNG uh, that you would like email around, so my workflow when I was doing data analytics at Facebook would be I would download some data, I would analyze it, I would make a graph and I'd email that to people and then they would send back feedback and we'd email around different versions of it. But that's crazy. Um, and it's an absurd way to work with people. Uh, email is such a, a low bar way to work with people. But like, you can use Google Docs to write things together, so why can't you make graphs and analyze data with people online? And so, as you'll note, recall, this was a graph that was written with Python, but now we can go straight into a GUI here, and it gives you a way to collaborate with people who are not necessarily technical. So I can go in and I can change anything about my traces here, my layout, all of it is editable for me right here. So let's say that I wanted to do something like draw a fit. So I'll add a fit to it. I pick linear, I run the fit, and it draws a fit on. Now I say I want to add the results to it. And so now I have a fit. And the other important part about this is that oftentimes when you make a graph, you lose the data that's with it. So when I make graphs, typically I have like untitled 0 through 56 in my directories. And I'm like two months later, like, oh my god, what data did I use to make this graph? And I don't know. And that's crazy too, because you should always be able to get data that's with a graph, because it's just another perspective on the same data. So whenever you make a graph with Plotly, you can always just go straight in and view the data that's associated with it. Now, you'll recall that we made a fit on top of it, and so we haven't saved that yet. So we'll save it, and we'll be able to grab the data that's with it. So now that we've saved it, we go in, and so we've made a copy of it. So any graph that's on Plotly, you can fork and get a copy of that data and of that graph. So it's always shareable. So now we've gone in and you can see that we added the fit data to this. Now on top of that, we can just go in. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, and we can share this just like we would a Google Doc. And so it's right here. That's how I make it collaborative. I just add someone else and they can have read-write privileges with me. And so that means that people who are working in R and Python and MATLAB and Julia and all of the APIs that we have who are hardcore data scientists can also collaborate with people who use Excel or who aren't as technical, because you can just share it. And then instead of having to email it around and make lots of different versions of it, we save your revision history. So you can save 10, 20, 30 different versions of the same graph, because as you're iterating, that process and that history is an important part of that data project. And now, once you've made it, the other cool thing is you can easily export it and share it in an iframe. So that means that you don't have to learn JavaScript. So this is a wired writer named Brett Allen. And he just embeds his graphs here in a, plotly, in a Plotly post. And that's just thrown in with an iframe. It's a little teeny snippet of HTML that you can put in. And you get free JavaScript graphs right out of the box that share your data and graph with it. The other cool thing about this is you can make really awesome graphs. So this is a century of asteroid flybys made by an astrophysicist. So what you have going on here is across the bottom is the date. So we have 100 years. Y-axis is the flyby distance for the asteroids. The bubbles are sized for the size of the asteroid, and they're colored for speed. So dark-colored ones going slow, light-colored ones going fast. And what you can tell also is, because he's thrown a line in on the bottom, 
that shows the moon and geosynchronous orbit, and then a line that shows today, which is this green one, you can see that we're really good at telling when asteroids have flown by, but really bad at telling when they're coming. <laughs> and so the cool thing about this too is, oh, I can interact with it. And so I zoom in, and then I can see the name of every asteroid that's here and all the data about it on the hover. And he doesn't have to do anything extra other than make the graph, and we give you that out of the box for free. Um, the other cool thing about it is, uh, I'm gonna have to put the mic down. So every Plotly user gets a profile that you can have all of your graphs at, so people can come and see what you're doing. But this is the real killer feature for scientists and quants and hedge funds and NASA and SpaceX and these other places that have been using us, is you can stream data right to the browser, and that is a live URL. You can go to that on your phone, and you can see the same data as me. So that means anyone, anywhere, for free, can just set up live streaming graphs, make streaming graphs, make publication quality graphs. It's all in the browser. This, uh, this, is, this is streaming data coming in from a Raspberry Pi. Um, and so you can set up like Raspberry Pis and Arduinos and Nests and all of these things to bring in data. So this was part of an Instructable that a guy made uh, where he's streaming in dissolved oxygen through his Raspberry Pi. All right, let's give a hand for Plotly. Very amazing. And. Uh, it was so cool that um, we ran a little bit past the five-minute mark, but let's open it up to Q&A um, and um, have our judges ask you a few questions. Hi. Really cool product, and I think it would go a long way in educating people about the importance of data science, and we need more of them in the near future. But quick question, what's the learning curve like for using a product like that? Uh, yeah, sure. So I emailed today with a seventh grader. Um, we have a lot of, like, we have a Chrome app that has 22,000 users on it because this is a key thing for a lot of schools where data science and fits and physics and science are all part of high school curriculums, but high schools want to use things that are free and that are online because you can't run Excel, you can't download a lot of software onto your laptops. So we think that it's quite easy to use. Um, and so just like from the standpoint of this, if I want to make a graph, I can import and just upload CSVs, .txt, Excel. And the other nice thing for teachers is, instead of having to like share something from a Dropbox, you can just publicly share this grid. So I can just say, go to this URL, go in, click the kind of plot that you want to make. I want to make a line plot. Pick your axes. And we make a line plot. And then you can go in and do custom things to it and change it and make it pretty and stuff like that. But we think it's pretty easy. Um, as a long-term power user of Excel, I think this is awesome. Um, but question around thoughts on, on the long, longer-term vision here. Um, you're obviously doing a lot with data and, and graphs and that sort of thing, but do you think about moving more towards a platform play where you have more features and not just graphs, but other stuff that you're generating in this sort of free online portal? It's super shareable. Yeah, I mean, so the longer term aspiration for us is to be um, a really social experience um, so that people could come in and get data and graphs and insights and stuff like that. So we're actually going to push a feed tonight. So you'll just have a feed of graphs where you could go in and follow users. So like this guy, Rhett, who writes for Wired, or people from the Washington Post use this. I want to know when they make a new graph. Like, I want it in my inbox. And so that's what we're going to do. So I think that like the longer term aspiration for us is to be like an incredibly cool tool for users who are like hardcore physicists, but then also like middle schoolers. And like I emailed with a guy yesterday who's using Plotly on like an IPython notebook out of all these like crazy out of the box free online things. And we want to be useful for them, but then for like middle schoolers and high schoolers and people who have to pay two hundred dollars for a MATLAB license or pay you know pay to like by various software programs that they're going to use, like Excel, that they use like once or twice, and it's on, you know, it's, it's local. So I make a graph, you never get to see it again. So I don't know if that answers your question. But. Uh, very cool, thanks for sharing. I had a question on, when you think about selling it to enterprises like NASA, uh, what are you doing on the security front uh, to ensure that those guys are comfortable with the, the framework here uh, to collaborate? Mm -hmm. So there's kind of like various entry points that we have for people depending on like what categorization they need for their security. So I was on the privacy team at Facebook before this. Yeah. So this is, we're now speaking my, my language. Um, 
So I think there's various entry points. So one is just like right off the bat, you always control privacy and sharing, which is like useful for a lot of people. Where if you, you know, so the only way you can see my plot is if you're a logged in user with whom I've shared it and you show up on our on our site. Otherwise, you can't see it. Um, so the other side of it is we use a, so we have a JavaScript library that enterprises can use and license and buy if they want to do their own hosting. Um, and then they never have to let any data leave their servers. Um, and then we do like everything goes over HTTPS, so it's secure transmission. We use like Amazon S3. We have passwords. We do a lot of encryption. Um, we use like sender policy frameworks for email, so you can't spoof it. We've tried to follow a lot of like the best practices for it. Um, but the longer term thing is we'll probably just set up instances so you can just deploy Plotly onto your own servers. Yeah. Um, we haven't set that up yet, but we've had a, a, a lot of companies that have expressed an interest in it. Yeah, that, that's a great next step. That's the move for us. All right. So, as you can see at SV New Tech, you know, a lot of the times we have consumer facing um, initiatives, but something like this obviously scales to the enterprise, and uh, it's pretty cool to see a product that um, you know a seventh grader can use as well as a NASA engineer. So nice job, Plotly.